Dearly beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord and welcome to these episodes. Thank you for giving time to listen in. And God has been good at all times, our keeper, our provider. Uh, he's our strong tower. And the Bible says that the righteous run to hit the strong tower and they are safe. So our safety is guaranteed when we are in the Lord. When we find him, our safety is guaranteed. And so we thank God for every opportunity that he gives us every time we interact with his word. And so you are most welcome and we thank God for the life that he gives us, for the opportunity to be alive and say hallelujah Jesus. And that is what we are created for. And so I just ask you to take one little moment in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that you give us to interact with your word. We pray, loving Father, that you bless us even as we think through these biblical figures that we have always looked at. They were men and women, those that you served faithfully, that those that served you faithfully. We pray the Lord, they enable us to serve you faithfully because serving you faithfully, they are blessings. And those that did serve you faithfully, we learn lessons so that we may remain faithful to you. We pray that you bless us during this time in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God is our father and he is our life. Guaranteed is our safety when we find him. And so this time we continue like we have always had. Now, this time is the book of Judges. One of the books that stipulate a lot of things that we learn from as the body of Christ, because we say the body of Christ is the church. And so he has established us here to be a faithful people, a people that will continue with our journey as we go on into the promised land, which is our heaven. And as our Lord Jesus Christ comes back, he delivers us there without wrinkle. Now the people of Israel moved years and years on the road, on the way, from Egypt to Canaan. And the man that leads them up to the river before they could cross over was Moses. And Moses, the man of God, the Bible says, he dies before he crosses over and they raise another leader. God raises another leader called jo Joshua. Now Joshua leads the people into conquests and they conquer the land. We have read through the book of Joshua how he did it the commander of the arm of the Lord. He conquered, they entered, and now they are beginning to share the land. Now, time comes, Joshua leaves the stage. Joshua dies, and there arises another generation. And this is the time that we're talking about as the book of Judges. This is a time when they were now in the, promise, in the promised land, they have started allotting themselves the land, sharing as tribes, clans, and strategically positioned themselves. And so when we read the book of Judges, we see that actually when they entered there, many, many things happened. And so in verse 1 of the book of Judges, the Bible says that after the death of Joshua, the people of Israel inquired of the Lord, who shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? Then the Lord gave them the instruction in verse 2 that the Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. And so God was giving them directions as to how to do it. But at this time, Joshua was a man that stood out as their leader, but now dies. But remember earlier, Moses stood out as their leader. Moses dies, Joshua comes. Now after Joshua, there is no specific person that is mentioned that actually is coming to lead the people. And so because of what has happened, there was a bit of virtue that this virtue actually created trouble for the people of Israel. And so um, the Bible is stating that actually they just they would go and inquire of the Lord and God would tell them this, this, this and that. And God was their king, 
God was their leader. God was their everything. But people started questioning that we need someone who will lead us humanly. And so this vacuum here created them trouble. Trouble, trouble. This is the period before the era of kingship started. And now there were troubles, there were challenges that they faced. But God being faithful, he could raise for them leaders seasonally. And these leaders are the ones that are talking about as judges. Not in the sense that we understand them as judicial officers, like we see magistrates, like we see um, um, justices and name them at, during our time. But in the sense here is the sense that actually there were God, there were leaders of God's people leading them at a certain period of time. And this is what they were doing, lead them, guide them, show them the way and defeat battles that they were faced with and do a few things. And then one at a time they would die off and then another one would come. But after one dies, there would be a virtue. And so there is a trouble with the virtue that was created. And so judges came into picture when the people had just settled in Canaan and they dealt with several issues. There were foreign affairs issues. In the foreign affairs issues, judges were their deliverers. Foreign affairs, there would be nations that would attack them. There would be nations that there would be trouble. And so a judge, a leader of God's people would enable them to deliver them in areas like those that I've just mentioned, dealing with other nations. But also, there were other national issues, internally issues. Of course, there were issues of settlement. Now, judges would be administrators. They would enable them to share the land. They would enable them to settle their disputes. They would enable them to lead them a few things here and there. So in the national arena, judges did their work. But also, religiously. You see, Israel was all round. They were God, it was a theocratic nation. Theocratic means that actually they took God. God was their yardstick in everything. And so in the religious circles, judges were the modelers. They were the models of the covenant of faith. And so even when many of them, as we shall be seeing them, many of them were flawed men and women with weaknesses, but God used them to model a uh, religious uh, covenant faith. And so these people were great men and women that God raised to lead his people in as far as other nations were concerned, in as far as the national issues were concerned, and in as far as religious issues were concerned. So before Israel got the kingship, and immediately after the settlement, after the death of Joshua, there were issues. Now, Joshua had died, and the virtue was that I've already mentioned. Now, judges were raised, coming in as liberators, coming in as deliverers. Now, it was a darker season for the people of Israel because there was no straight leader that actually would lead them, and there was trouble in that time. So, there were issues. One of them that stands out is that actually they never completed total um, settlement. They didn't chase out all the nations that God had instructed them to destroy fully. God had given them earlier what we call the Act of Harem. Harem. Act of Harem, Act of Harem was total annihilation, total destruction of the enemy. And the Bible tells us about dealing with sin or evil decisively. So these people failed to totally defeat the Canaanites and chase them out. And so because they failed to chase them out totally, that was the trouble. And friends, as we learn, as we read through in our program, in our episodes of Finding God, this is one of the things that we find as a problem. Dealing with sin decisively is the issue. Dealing with evil decisively is the issue. Now we find these men, these people, failing to completely destroy 
as God had given them instructions. But in chapter 1, verses 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, up to 34, we see how partially they dealt with the problem. Like verse 27, chapter 1 of Judges, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shean and its villages, or Tanakh and its villages. Now, this failure to completely settle in was a problem. Now, verse 29, they also mentioned another tribe that Ephraim did not drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gazelle. So the Canaanites lived in Gazelle among them. And friends, during the book of Judges, this was a problem. And in verse 30, Zebulun did not drive out the inhabitants of Kitron or the inhabitants of Naharol, so the Canaanites lived among them. And that was the problem. In verse 31, Asher did not drive out the inhabitants of Akol, and now not driving out was a problem. In verse 33, Naphtal did not drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh or the inhabitants of Beth Anath, so they lived among the Canaanites. That was a problem. And in verse 34, the Amorites pressed the people of Dan back into the hills, and because they didn't do total destruction, there was a challenge during the time of Judges. So friends, when we talk about the challenges, the darker times that these people faced was because they didn't deal decisively with the problem. Now, even during our time, we are called upon to deal decisively. If it is sin, deal with it decisively. So that actually um, your walk with God will be without blemish. And so it is a call to us as we find God we need to deal with a challenge, face with it, face it head on, and deal with it. If it is repentance, do it fully. If it is confession, do it fully. Whatever it is, do it fully. And these people did not follow the instructions that God had given them to deal with the enemy decisively. And so, because of what they went through, there was stubbornness of heart. People started disobeying God because of the Canaanites that remained staying with them. And so it became a challenge in their faith. And um, over years, people sinned against God. And every time they would sin against God, he would let them be defeated, be conquered by other nations. It would lead to suffering. And so during our time, we also look at these examples and say, oh God, help us that if we are dealing with the issues of sin, we deal with them decisively. And so that looking up to you, O oh God, without blemish. And so judges would come in one at a time to deliver the people from the troubles that they were in. They would come in at a time, one at a time. And as we read in Judges chapter 2, verse 16, the Bible does mention, but before we go to 16, this is what happened in verse 10, that all the generation also were gathered to their fathers and there arose another generation after whom, after them who did not know the Lord. Now, when another generation comes that they don't know the Lord, there is trouble. We are grappling with issues, many, many issues in the church because of the generation that comes that does not know the Lord. That's the trouble. And so because there was another generation that did not know the Lord, of course, the people that came, that came in all had died, and these are now grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Great now trouble started. So friends, when another generation starts that does not know the Lord, problems arise. Problems arise. Now, in our time, we call upon ourselves that, hey, we need to arise and shine. That even when issues, when there are people that do not know the Lord, you and I are called upon to remain standing. Because even during the time of judges, these men stood the test of time. Even when they were flaw people, they, were weak, they had weaknesses, they had challenges of their, you know, their sinfulness at work, but God used them. So I pray that God will use you, young man, that God will use you, young woman, God will use you, my brother, God will use you, my sister. So that there will be sanity in our time, like God used these judges. And so in verse 16 of chapter 2, judges, that then the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hand of those who plundered them. 
And so we pray that actually God will raise up men and women during our time as well to save the generation. And so every time the judge would be raised, there would be sanity. Every time there would be a virtue of no judge, there would be chaos. And so we mentioned some of them. And we're going to be dealing with one of them at a time uh, in our subsequent um, episodes. The first one is called Othniel. Another one is called Ehud. Another one is called Shamugar, followed by Deborah, a lady. Gideon, Tola, Jair, Japheth, Jephthah, Ibu, Ibuthan, Elon, Abdon, Samson, and the list continues. So these were the leaders chosen by God to deliver God's people. Now, my prayer this time, that God will continue raising men and women in our time to defend their faith, to defend, to stand for the truth, to stand for Christianity. And you and I could be the people that God wants to use, like he used these judges during that time. Now, there are certain lessons that we pick from here that I, I want to run through very quickly with you. These lessons, we pick one which stands out. The issue of stubbornness of heart stands out, stood out at that time, during the time of the judges, because they partially defeated the nations that lived in the Mideast. Now, stubbornness of heart is a challenge. Ignoring advice is a challenge, you know. It leads us into serious trouble. Can lead someone into serious trouble. When someone doesn't want to follow what God's word says, trouble arises. And so stubbornness of heart causes rejection of Christ. You go astray. Time of rebellion is what caused them. And what enticed them into rebellion is because of the nations that God had told them drive out and they never drove them out. And so this is the issue that I pick from this book of Judges. So as we read in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1, in the Proverbs 29 verse 1, the Bible does mention that actually stubbornness will create trouble. And this is what it says, that he who is often reproved yet stiffens his neck will suddenly be broken beyond healing. Now, stiff nakedness is the problem. During that time it was, and during our time it is. And the reason why we appeal to young people, we appeal, we appeal to adults, we appeal to everyone, that stiff, being stiff-necked, not obeying God's word, is disaster. And so we call upon ourselves, find God, relax yourself, be submissive, be obedient, and there will be goodness, you will eat the good of the land. And so he says it in Isaiah chapter 1, yes, verse 19, that if you are obedient, if you are, you know, you eat the good of the land. But if you are rebellious, he says you will be devoured by the sword. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. The reason why in verse 18 he says, come and we listen together. And so during our time, we call ourselves, come and God, God is inviting, come and we listen together. And this is actually a passionate appeal that God is giving us today. Come and we listen together. And so whoever you are, this stubbornness, stiff nakedness will bring about destruction, which is actually deadly. And so we appeal to ourselves and say, oh, no, 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 no. Let's get back to the Lord. For he, will, he who has crushed us will heal us. And so in 2 Timothy also, Verse 4, chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, the Bible warns that there will come a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching and they will gather among themselves teachers, people that they want because of their itching ears to listen and what to hear. And so during the time of judges, this is what happened also, that the people wanted to go the way they wanted to. But every time they would disobey, every time they would want to go their own way, God will send a foreign nation and will be devoured. This is why there were exiles, meaning being taken into exile, being taken into exile, and every time God, they would cry to God. God is so merciful. 
that every time they would cry to God, he would send a judge to, set, to save them. That's why I mentioned Ehud, I mentioned the Shamgar, mentioned the Deborah. He raised them one at a time to bring them back into the hands of the Lord. So God promises to deal away with our stubbornness. Like we read in Ezekiel, just want us to read Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. And in the book of Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19, the Bible does mention the record and God says, I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from them and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my rules and obey them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. For me, this is a message that actually you obey. You walk with the Lord. You find him. He becomes your God and you become his. So from the book of Judges, we find that actually many, many things were happening. But now this is one of them. That actually need to learn lessons, you and I. My brother, my sister, you and I to learn lessons from here. So every day that we are faced with a decision, God or not God, decide very quickly God's way is paramount. People wanting to do as they deem fit is the challenge of our time. People picking the Bible and reading them, reading the Bible the way they want to read it. It is our time. And the book of Judges spells out what these people went through. Challenge, trouble, difficulty, crying. But thankfully, God is good. That every time they would cry, God would listen to them. And so God listens to us. God answers prayer. And so, why does he do that? He's a jealous God. He punishes sin. He punishes when we rebel. He needs us to be his obedient children. Just like earthly fathers, if your children go astray, the same thing. Like daddy will say, no, 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 this one I don't want, and will rebuke. So our father is a jealous God. Like anybody else of us, when we say our children go astray, we rebuke. And so when you are rebuked, my son, when you are rebuked, my daughter, take it in humility and correct your way. And may God help us during our time. And judges, like we are saying, were also flawed people. They had weaknesses, but God used them to do great things. And so I pray for you that God will use you to do great things in your weakness. I pray for myself that God will use me to do great things. You know, we are weak in every way, every way. But God can use you. God can use us all. So we can flourish only when God is on our side, when God is with us. So friends, I call upon you, young or old, female or male, let us be walking along with God. Look up, look up and ask God to guide your ways. And so this is very, very important, staying faithful, staying faithful. And so, like we read in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, that let us put on the whole armor of God. Now, this is very important for you, that we put on the whole armor of God and then walk our walk. And may we ask God to deal with our wretchedness, to deal with our nakedness. The reason why we sing our amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that one time, you know, all of us are wretched in our own way. The judges' time in the Old Testament, people were wretched in their own way. But God, every time they would cry, God would raise up a leader. And during our generation, we are also saying, those of you who are leaders, may God use you to enable sanity return to our society. Those who are led, ask God, like the people of Israel could cry, cry, and God would hear them. Now, there is a secret in crying to God. Now you and I, crying to God, returning to God, going into your corner, into going, going into your closet and ask God, forgive me and find him 
find life. And deviation from him is disaster. And it's clearly stated here that God would raise up judges. And so we shall continue one at a time, pick a few of the judges and pick our lessons in finding God. And then we shall have um, our way paved and clearly so. So my brother, my sister, as you watch and as you consider, like we are looking at this book of Judges, may God speak to you in a special way. May God visit you in a special way. And may God raise you up during your generation, maybe in your family, maybe at your workplace, maybe on the street, maybe anywhere, that because of you on your account, God can save somebody. And may God keep you. May God provide for you. May God, may God his favor rest upon you. And as you continue in this journey, may God keep you and may God through you bless another person. And all of us shall be a blessing to one another in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We say, Amen.